An example should make the moment of momentum concept a little simpler. Suppose we have a jet propelled car that looks like this. It takes air in from the front, runs it through a gas turbine, and spits it out going much faster out the back. This generates a thrust pushing the car this way, so there's got to be a restraining force, F sub C, pushing on the front to hold it back. And if we orient that F sub C so it runs through the center of mass of the whole car, then that F sub C could just as easily be an acceleration in this direction. So there's F sub C acting through the center of gravity at some distance RC above the pavement here. Now if we want to know how big FC is, the car's not moving, sitting still on the pavement, so all we need to figure out is how fast stuff's going in the front, how fast it's going out the back. The faster the momentum goes out the back, compared to what comes in the front, the higher the thrust of the engine on the car, and that'll match up with FC. So, M.1 is the air that in, that'll depend on the size of the engine and so on. U1 is a negative number because it's going in the negative x direction. And V1 is equal to zero. There's no vertical motion. The air is all going horizontally. M.2 is M.1, the air that comes in, plus whatever fuel I'm burning in here because I've got to be burning some fuel in there so there's more mass going out here than came in there by a little bit whatever the uh, fuel-air ratio tells us it uh, has to be. Then U2 is going to be a large negative number, much bigger than U1 was. And the air and fuel are burning to give a little more mass coming out, and the whole thing is steady so that the mass flow going in and the mass flow going out balance with the addition of the fuel. V2, also equal to zero. No vertical here, it's all horizontal. The car has a weight of W, and that acts as gravitational force downwards through the center of gravity. FC is the restraint through the center of gravity, or it could be an acceleration. We're going to neglect road friction. We're also neglecting aerodynamic pressure forces. So neglecting all of those, then what we wind up with is negative FC, that's the force in the x direction is negative FC equal to m dot 2 u2 mass flow at 2 times the velocity component in the x direction at 2 which is a negative number minus m dot 1 u1 again u1 is a negative number so if we just go to the overall magnitudes of the velocities these capital V's here then we wind up with FC equal to m dot 2 v2 the overall velocity of the stuff coming out of here, a positive number, minus m dot 1 v1, the overall velocity that it came in with. So this is the difference between the momentum going out the back and the momentum going in the front, and that's the thrust force, and it's got to be offset by fc. Now if w is equal to zero and we turn this thing on, then the whole car will do this and flip over its front wheels and smash. That would be bad, but fortunately the car has some weight, so there's some weight causing a moment in this direction to offset the push from this jet in that direction up here, way up high. So, by the moment of momentum about A, and we're looking at the cross product of the radius uh, vector and the velocity vector, which gets really complicated really quickly. But if we look at our origin point here, we can look at moments about that origin point, and all we're interested in is the distance perpendicular to the applied force, if we're doing a moment balance based on forces. Likewise, we're interested in the distance perpendicular to the flow in or the flow out. So in this case R1 and R2. So moments in a counterclockwise direction. W tends to make the car tip down in a counterclockwise direction times RW, the moment arm out to W where, the, where it's located at the center of gravity. 
minus FB RB. This is generating a clockwise moment with this reaction force up on the wheel at B times the radius out to B plus FC times RC. The fact that FC is up here off the ground is tending to make the whole car rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So FC times RC. These are the counterclockwise moments due to the applied forces. Now when we do the R cross V momentum balance, moment of the momentum equation, we wind up with M dot 2 V2, that's the momentum going out here, times R2. Now if we did our cross products really carefully and got our directions correct, then we'd wind up knowing the right sign to put on this. But by examination, we can see that if we're throwing stuff out that way, we're generating a clockwise moment on the car with that thrust. So these are the clockwise moments due to the momentum flows. And they have to be equal to the counterclockwise moments due to the forces. Clockwise moments due to the momentum flows. M dot 2 times the absolute value of the velocity going out there times this offset radius. Minus M dot 1, V1, that's the momentum coming in here, times the radius that it comes in at. If there's fluid coming in here, this is the same effect as going out there but in the opposite direction. So this is generating a thrust, this is generating a counter thrust if you like. Negative m dot 1 v1 r1. Again it comes from taking the moments of the momentum equation. <clears throat> so if we know something about the flows and the dimensions we can figure out what fc is. If we know what fc is and we know what the thing weighs then we can figure out FB based on the flows and that'll tell us whether or not these back wheels are going to lift off the ground. We want FB to be a positive number and we can punch that information in and from our momentum balance dot product with the radius or sorry cross product with the radius the moment of momentum equation we wind up finding out is FB positive or negative if FB is negative, the car is going to flip over. If FB is positive, the car will stay on the road, although it may not have much rear wheel traction if FB is pretty small. So we might want to increase FB to at least get it to track smoothly. Now, if we take this jet and we increase its angle upwards like that, that's going to have two effects. One, it's going to mean that the component of the velocity in the X direction is smaller that's going to make FC smaller. The other thing is as we tilt it up the moment arm R2 between the axis of the thrust and this origin A becomes smaller. It goes from being R2 like that to a little higher. Now it's R2 by 2 more or less. It's half as big so it'll have half as much effect towards flipping the car over. And finally, if we had this directed down through that origin, it would give us no moment about the origin. Or more importantly, if we directed it through the axle of the wheel, it would give us no moment around that front axle, no tendency to flip it over. And the result would be, we'd increase FB. We'd lose on our thrust force, though, so we wouldn't get the same kind of acceleration out of the car. So that's the practical application of the moment of momentum equation. Just a matter of balancing out the forces that are due to these moment, momentum flows and their effects on the moments around the larger chassis.